Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie with Reason TV, and today we're talking with Roger Bate, who's a resident scholar at AEI, the American Enterprise Institute. He's got a PhD in applied economics, and he is the author of Fake, the Deadly World of Falsified and Substandard Medicines. Thanks, Roger, for talking to us. My pleasure. How widespread is the problem with falsified or fake counterfeit prescription drugs around the world? Well, it depends where you are. I mean, if you're in Africa, it's a significant problem. Maybe 10, 15, 20 percent of the supply is falsified or at least substandard. There's a gray area between where there's an intent to deceive the patient or just sloppy production. So it depends on the law. So a substandard drug could be something that was just made poorly, but it's yes. not actually fraudulent or it hasn't been adulterated. That's correct. Yeah. And um, a lot of drugs lose their potency, right, if they're that's not right. done or, or conveyed in the right way. A lot of drugs don't have the right active ingredients or the right amounts. Some of them are just unstable so that if they're left on the dock or in a, uh, in a pharmacy with bad uh, climate control, which is most of Africa, then they can decay. What are the biggest drugs that get counterfeited or sold in a, in a kind of gray market? The key thing to, to work that out is actually to put yourselves in the, the place of the counterfeiter. The key thing for them is to be able to make drugs, sell them, regardless of the price to a certain extent, and be able to get away with it. I've seen fakes of pills that cost 40 US cents in mm -hmm. India. So it, it's not just the price of the drug. But having said that, if you can break into the US market faking Viagra, which a lot of people want to do, or faking oncology drugs, which sell for like $2,000 a, a prescription, um, you can make a lot more money. A few years ago, wasn't there a massive Lipitor scam going around the world? Uh, hundreds of thousands yeah. of pills of Lipitor were faked. Um, there were, there were recent, the most recent fatal incident in the United States that we know of is about 149 Americans dying from fake heparin, which is a blood thinning drug. But often it's very difficult to know. If you've got a condition like right. leukemia or you've got a heart condition, if you have a heart attack, no one's likely to look for the, did the drug not work? You know, the evidence is usually swallowed. So I would argue that there are more cases than are generally reported, but uh, it is a lower problem in the US. What is the government's role in kind of regulating this or controlling the flow of prescription drugs? And what, what are the kind of market approaches to it? Well, the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, does a reasonable job of overseeing the production plants where they can get to them. And so th that regulation, I think, is important in and of itself, but also because it encourages better behavior. It's a kind of carrot and stick. Patients can't possibly tell the difference between a good pill and a bad pill. So it's, it's important that there's regulation there. It's enforced. But of course, the FDA can't have unfettered access to production plants in China. They have to give notice. Now, I'm a typical guy. Right. If my wife, if, if I know she's coming home in an hour and the apartment's a mess, I can tidy it up in an hour. If you're given a week's notice in a Chinese production plant, you can probably make it look pretty good. So the FDA has a role, but given how much we get from overseas, 80% of the ingredients in our drugs come from overseas, it comes down to the companies primarily. Everyone in the distribution chain has a role to play in monitoring for problems. The most recent problem was fake Avastin, which is a, a cancer drug, and it was found by the distributor. As new technologies develop or new markets develop. Are we seeing uh, all of the, the factors in the supply chain getting better at monitoring things? So is this a, a problem that will go down or is it a problem that is starting to get out of control? The data point to it getting worse, but that it could be because we're paying more attention. It's one of the classic cases where we're finding more cases every year, but that may be because we're looking and doing a better job of finding it. But I think the problem is probably getting worse uh, in richer countries and certainly in other parts of the world as uh, criminals become more sophisticated. It's easier to print packaging. And after all, the counterfeiter, the prime job is to make the pill and the packaging look as good as possible. What would have cost tens of thousands of dollars in machinery can now be done in hundreds of dollars with printing technology. So it's easier to fake stuff now. The counterfeiter will try and insert their products wherever they can. Um, if you buy online, you can do so relatively safely if you go to a credential pharmacy, either uh, uh, accredited by the National Associations of the Boards of Pharmacy, or if you're looking for really cheaper products from overseas, pharmacychecker.com credentials about 50 or 60 overseas pharmacies. The rest, and we're talking maybe 10,000, are really just web sellers, they're not pharmacies. And often they are going to sell you products that may not have been regulated, and certainly, and sometimes products that are totally bogus. When we sampled from the field, sampled about 370 different products, um, we found uh, uh, quite a few fakes coming out of China. We're uh, big libertarians at reason. If we get rid of the prescription drug regime in America, say, would institutions kind of crop up that would actually start regulating, you know, good housekeeping seals of approval that would be much more stringent and much more effective than the FDA? In this instance, because it's very difficult for the patient and even the pharmacist to spot it, regulation is going to be important. But yeah, the, the companies and the technologies that are evolving 
evolving to deal with this problem um, are coming online from companies. So spectrometers, handheld spectrometers, so to actually be able to spot fakes. Soon, I would imagine within the next five, ten years, there'll be an app for an iPhone where if you're a regular taker of Lipitor, you'll be able to scan the pill itself yeah. because it, you'll be able to see. And I think putting the power for the consumer will be ultimately be the test. And then if a pharmacy routinely is selling bad products, it'll get sued. Uh, talk a little bit about the third man, the great uh, 50s thriller set in uh, post-war Europe in Vienna. What is the main plot point of that story? Faking products, yeah. uh, be it pharmaceuticals or currency or other, is, is, is often considered the second oldest profession. And uh, Orson Welles did a good job of demonstrating this in the movie The Third Man, where he plays a counterfeiter. He's doing the classic trick of the counterfeiter, which is to dilute a product. In this case, he's diluting penicillin to make more money and selling it to hospitals indirectly and sometimes directly killing kids who have meningitis. It gets across nicely because at the time, uh, Hollywood actually was ahead of the curve. It was four years before a lot of the pharmacy associations in Europe set up specifically to deal with adulterated, diluted penicillin. How did you uh, get into the, uh, interested in this topic? Well, over the last 15 years, I've been doing a lot of work on malaria and HIV. In 2004, when we were in Zimbabwe, and we came across people who were not responding to their HIV medication as best as they should have done. The doctors weren't certain of the cause. Zimbabwe was a mess then and is not that much better now. And the doctors, they didn't have the time to actually do a kind of audit of where the problems were. But I think that was the first time I witnessed fake drugs being ingested by patients. And I went back the year later and the two patients that I'd spoken to had died. So I think you know that, that was not yeah. conclusive proof, but it was the thing that sparked my interest. And then like all policy wonks, you, know, you start looking at the data and realize there isn't very good there aren't very good data, and uh, it started investigating from there. I want to thank Roger Bade of the American Enterprise Institute and the author of Fake, the Deadly World of Falsified and Substandard Medicines for talking with Reason TV. I'm Nick Gillespie. Thanks.